Hi, I'm Martin. I'm out here on the top new piece. Welcome to another Wildlife Weekly. This week we'll be looking at uh, some of the wading birds around the site and also a close look at moths. The oyster catchers, very active birds um, and quite aggressive. They will chase off uh, anything that comes in their, in their way and this is demonstrated by an oyster catcher moving one of uh, the local mallards out of the way. So out here on the top new piece we have a pair of avocets with two young. Um, they're very busy defending those young from anything that flies over really. They will intercept the, the large gulls, the crows, and just chase them away from their chicks just to make sure that they're not a threat to their youngsters. Now also um, at this stage of the season we have adult birds which are molting but there's also lots of wading birds in juvenile plumage and uh, this lapwing uh, it demonstrates that but there's lots of juveniles in amongst the flocks and they do look slightly different so it can be a little bit confusing um, if you're panning through and uh, you see what appears to be a different species often it's just a juvenile of a familiar species. I'm just going to uh, introduce you to one of my colleagues Peter Cranswick um, who's going to give you a second instalment and update on the current moth situation. Hello I'm Peter Cranswick I'm head of species recovery here at WWT. But today I'm going to talk to you about moths. We have a fantastic variety of moths in the UK and whilst most people are very familiar with their daytime cousins, the butterflies, I'm going to try and excite you about how many moths we have and how fantastic they are. Moths get split into two big groups. It's, it's an arbitrary split. They're called macro moths. These are the big ones. These are the ones that, that fly around your porch light at night. And there's about 800 of those in the UK, but there are 1,500 micro moths, is what they're called. And most of them are really small, less than a centimetre long. And when people start to learn and look at moths, they often ignore the micros because they're hard. But then they overlook things like the mother of pearl, and that's a, a really nice moth. It's well worth looking at. It's quite common, you'll find it in your back garden, it feeds on nettles, but if you look at the adult and hold it up to the light and catch the sun on it, you'll see the sheen, that oily film, and that's why it's called mother of pearl. A great species we get here is the drinker moth. Uh, to me, it looks like a great big fluffy teddy bear of a moth. Uh, if you look really closely at this one as a male, you can see it's got feathered antennae, and this is how males smell out females. Females emit pheromones, and then the males use these structures on their antennae to track down the female, and it's really powerful. Some species of silk moth, for example, the males can detect a female five kilometers away. So it's a really fantastic bit of apparatus. But even if you don't have a light trap, you will encounter moths. If you leave a porch light on or leave your kitchen light on overnight, moths will come up against the window. Uh, and then you can go out and identify them. And there's lots of help online about how to identify them and what the common ones are. So even if you just want to dip your toe in the water, there's plenty of ways to do it. Okay, with the, uh, the current uh, warm weather that we've been having, it has been brilliant for butterflies and insects generally, but um, a top tip if you want to try and see a variety of species when the sun is out is to just hang around a buddleia bush. They're all attracted to the, the big purple flowers on there. And uh, if you just stay there for a short while, you'll see uh, a range of butterfly species feeding on the nectar. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to share it with your family and friends uh, on Facebook or Twitter. Um, or even subscribe to our YouTube channel or look us up on our website.